All right, guys, here we are again. I didn't think I'd have to make this video. Some part of me didn't want to. You can tell maybe already <clears throat> by my tone how I might feel about this topic, but I personally think this needs to be done. Uh, it needs to be made. I'm <laughs> let's uh, let's just let's get into it. You s you saw the title, Ages of the Immortal. This is a really bad item. It's not unpickable. I'm going to just go ahead and, you know, give a quick preemptive self-defense. This is not an item you should never pick because there's so many items in the game that are basically borderline useless in some specific uh, circumstance. Like for example, something that's like synergy based or alliance based that you can't really take or many just trashed your items like force staff or cloak. Aegis is better than these, and these are the situations where, you know, if you must pick Aegis, Aegis can be a solid item. But from what I've seen, people coming into my Twitch chat, um, and even like some fairly high level players uh, really do like this item. I just want to go ahead and debunk this right now, really, really quickly, okay? Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. So Aegis is an item that, of course, when you would otherwise take fiddle damage, take no damage and destroy Aegis. So the idea behind this item is it's a get out of jail free card for, you know, fatal damage at the end of the game. So this is an item that is al almost a bit weaker by its timing. It drops in tier two and it would actually be a stronger item or, you know, you'd, you'd have a higher pick rate of this item if it dropped in tier three instead which is very counterintuitive, but because tier three has so many situational items uh, that you normally wouldn't be able to take, like elusive targets, pocket sand, etc., And because you see Aegis so early uh, you know, into the game otherwise, and you don't really want to pick this item that early, I would very happily take this in a lot of like tier three, uh, you know, item shops. I do this a lot if I see like you know elusive target, dragon sword, and an Aegis on something like round twenty. You know, of course I'll take the Aegis. It's not that bad, and Aegis almost paradoxically is kind of better the later you get it. Um, in a strange way, I mean relative to other items, because other items you want to get as early as possible. In Aegis, it doesn't matter when you get it, right? So let's go ahead and think about what's going to happen in a round three item shop. You are, you know, in round three of the game. And let's say, you know, your options are Cloak, Claymore, and Aegis of the Immortal. All right. So uh, basically the idea is we can immediately rule out Cloak. As I already mentioned before, Cloak is basically a non-item, right? Uh, it's even worse than something like Aegis. This effect has almost no ability to influence the outcome of the game uh, compared to basically any other item. So we uh, have Claymore versus Aegis in round three. Aegis is shiny, it's a tier two. It feels very good when you get this, right? And that's the main thing I want to point out here because when you get Aegis of the Immortal, it's like, ooh, okay. It, at the end of the game, it's like, wow, my Aegis just activated. Sometimes you land two higher ranks. It's like, oh, I was going to get sixth, but now I got fourth because my E just popped. And that feels good as a player. It makes you think, wow, that just had an impact. Let's actually think what happens if we choose Claymore on round three. Okay? So if we, <laughs> if we choose Claymore on round three, 21 attack damage is pretty solid. Now, Claymore is not a high tier item. Uh, Chainmail, Blightstone, Brooch of the Martyr, Vitality Booster... Gloves of Haste are all better items. Uh, Claymore is a bit better than Tranquil Boots. Claymore is pretty low tier for tier one items. But if we choose Claymore early, let's imagine how rounds four through 19 play out. Now, before round 20, there are a total of 15 human opponent rounds, right? In those rounds, 21 additional attack damage is going to help you secure a few fights. Uh, you are going to be killing, you know, one more opponent hero when you lose a fight on occasion and you will be winning a couple of fights you would have otherwise lost uh, with Claymore through those 15 human rounds before round 20 happens, right? Uh, round 20 kind of marks the start of like the real, like it's past the economy phase. The first like 20 rounds of Underlords is just like 
build pathing and economy, right? After round 20, that's kind of when the real like late game begins. And that's the idea where like people are losing health. Some people are starting, nobody's getting knocked out yet, but some people are under threat of getting eliminated. So the pressure is starting to happen. A couple of people might have legendaries in this meta, for example, something like that. So let's, uh, let's think about those 15 rounds. How much health are we going to get from this Claymore? Uh, well, on average, uh, it's going to be something around something like 10 health, probably, right? You're going to have the uh, health that you get every time you kill one additional hero. Uh, it will give you health. And every time you win a fight that you otherwise would have lost, it not only gives you probably one, if not two health, but it gives you gold. And early gold is very important because it compounds as well, right? Uh, so by the time you even hit round 20, you are going to be looking at already more than the amount of health than Aegis will save you at the end of the game, right? Typically, there might be some exceptions to this. It depends on your composition. But the most important thing to understand about how fights work in Underlords is that they're extremely snowbally. Early DPS, like a little bit of extra damage into a fight, 21 attack damage in the first like 10 rounds of the game is like half a hero's worth of DPS, right? So when you have 21 attack damage, you know, you have something like four heroes and they have four heroes, but if you have a Claymore, you kind of have four and a half heroes, which is a pretty big advantage uh, from a DPS standpoint. And maybe you can put this on a hero that, you know, multiplies with it. And again, Claymore is just an example. It could be any other tier one item. Right. But the point is, is that fights are very snowbally. So, you know, if you have a little bit of extra strength early on into a fight, the end result of the fight can actually be very drastically different based on you killing their DPS like very slightly earlier. Uh, and any item that impacts boards will just give you more health at the end of the game than something like Aegis, especially in the form of gold, which allows you to use your health more effectively. Basically, that's it. So the question then becomes, why do people like Aegis? And there's a very simple answer, uh, which is it has a very kind of visceral and immediate and observable impact, right? It feels good. When you pick Aegis, you're like, mm, okay, so in 20 rounds from now, I get to see exactly what my item is doing, right? And, you know, you finish the game. Sometimes it's a big swing. Sometimes you finish like third place instead of like seventh place, right? But the problem is, is that that is happening with basically any other item that you can choose that has like a decent function. Even the slightly less good items like Claymore or Blade Mail or like Octarine Essence. These are items that are increasing your health by the time you hit like round 20, round 25, and even slightly increasing your like end game board state as well, right? Uh, they just don't have as much of a visible impact. That's it. And so you just kind of like gets, uh, it gets a lot of, the, it steals the show, you know, but these items are putting in work and they're very, very good to choose uh, compared to something that does nothing for the first 30 rounds of the game. All right. So then there's one final point I want to make, which is the argument some people have said that is Aegis has some unique functionality over some other items in the game in that it allows you to kind of like play more safely or play more greedy. Okay. Uh, this is a little nonsensical. The reason for that is because again, when you pick an item, particularly early on in the first three rounds, sometimes like, you know, round 10, particularly early on, that will literally translate to having more health by like round 20 or round 25, right? By the time your health is mattering as a resource, you will have more health by then. It's It does the same thing as Aegis, but better, right? It's it's, Aegis does not have a unique function in this way. It is not some special thing that allows you to have more health at the end of the game. Every item gives you more health at the end of the game, but these items do it in a better way. I would say Aegis is probably on round three. I think it might be somewhat comparable to Trackle Boots, which I ranked again between Claymore and Cloak. I'd have to actually like do some more do some more thinking and testing about it. I could see an argument for Trinkle Boots being higher or Aegis being higher, I guess. It's, like I said, it's fairly close. But the point is, 
I really wouldn't recommend taking this item if you have another choice. I think it is basically a noob trap that a lot of players fall prey to. Um, but, of course, when you do see that, like, rare pack on Tier 3 where, you know, we've got the four staff to check the bodies and, oh, look, the third item is, at a, you know, a Tier 2 Aegis, I'm like, okay, sure, Aegis, it's not that terrible. It's around 20, could actually get me, like, a rank or two higher. I'd still have preferred it if it was, like, a Scotty or a Relic, something that did something, but, you know, hey, it's, it's functional, you know, it does something. That's it. All right, that's my Aegis rant. Again, this is not my, I don't normally... Is not my normal tone for my videos. It's just I've gotten I can't tell if they're trolls, but there's <laughs> there's a lot of Aegis loyalists that have been coming up to me lately and trying to red pill me on Aegis. I I personally am not having none of that. Okay, so that's it. That's my Aegis video. Don't pick Aegis.